Hi friends, this is the third episode in my ECG classes. Today we will see some important facts about ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. Both are very dangerous in nature and they may get worse to cardiac arrest. So as a healthcare professional, early recognition of these rhythms are very important for saving lives. In this episode, we will see some key points to identify these life-threatening heart problems. Let's start. First, we will go for ventricular tachycardia or VT. VT is a fast heart rhythm that begins from ventricles. If not treated, some forms of ventricular tachycardia may get worse to ventricular fibrillation, which may be fatal. As we know, the leading cause of cardiac arrest is VF. Let's see something more about ventricular tachycardia. Ventricular tachycardia almost always occurs in disease heart, rhythm in which three or more PVCs arise in sequence at a rate greater than 100 beats per minute. VTA can occur in short bursts lasting less than 30 seconds, causing few or no symptoms. Sustained VTA lasts for more than 30 seconds and requires immediate treatment to prevent death. VTA can quickly deteriorate to ventricular fibrillation. These are two examples of VTA. More examples are coming later. Next, we will see the classification of ventricular tachycardia. Why we need to know the classifications? Because the management is according to the classification of the rhythm. The classification is depends on mainly three factors. First one is duration of episode. If VT less than 30 seconds, it's classified as non-sustained VT. And if more than 30 seconds, is called as sustained ventricular tachycardia. Second one is morphology. There are mainly two types, polymorphic and monomorphic. In monomorphic VT, all QRS complexes display the same morphology that indicates impulses are originating from same ectopic focus. In polymorphic VT with varying QRS morphology or varying electrical axis. And the rhythm may be irregular and very fast. The heart rate may be less in between 100 to 320 beats per minute. And third one is symptoms. Stable or with pulse, unstable or without pulse. Next, we will see some signs and symptoms of ventricular tachycardia. See here some causes and signs and symptoms of VTEC. VTEC usually occurs with underlying heart disease and commonly occurs with myocardial ischemia or infarction. Certain medications may prolong the QT interval, predisposing the patient to ventricular tachycardia, electrolyte imbalance, digital toxicity, and congestive heart failure. Here are signs and symptoms chest discomfort, angina, syncope, lightheadedness or dizziness, palpitations, shortness of breath, absent or rapid pulse, loss of consciousness, and hypotension. If you notice the signs and symptoms, almost all the symptoms are same for all the cardiac problems because any abnormality in the cardiac function will compromise the cardiac output. And you know the result of low cardiac output will be the same for all the time. Now we will check the diagnosis of VT. What are the five steps to identify that? These are the five steps to identify when required tachycardia. As we always do, we will look to the rate first. What is the rate? In VTAC, the rate will be in between 100 to 250 beats per minute. The second one is what is the rhythm? In VTAC, atrial rhythm not distinguishable and ventricular rhythm usually regular. The third one is, is there a P wave before each QRS? Are P waves upright and uniform? In VTAC, we will never see the P wave. And the fourth one is what is the length of PR interval? In VTAC, it is not measurable. The fifth one, do all QRS complex look alike? What is the length of the QRS complexes? In VTAC, it will be wide and bizarre and more than 0.12 seconds. This is an example for ventricular tachycardia monomorphic in 12 lead ECG. Look at the rate here, it is more than 100 and uh, regular ventricular rhythm. Uh, no P wave we can see here, no P wave. And if no P wave, we cannot measure the PR interval. And look at the big uh, QRS complex here, it is wide and bizarre, more than three small squares, more than 0.12 seconds. Here it is uh, another example for monomorphic VTEC in ECG strip. Look at the rate and it is uh, uh, same uh, shape. 
here also we can see the same shape and it is monomorph. This is the example for polymorphic VTAC in Tolid ECG. We can see here varying QRS morphology and irregular rhythm. See here the QRS morphology is varying. Some are small, some are uh, big. And uh, here is in the strip. Also, we can see here varying QRS morphology and the rate is very fast. And here down, we can see something uh, different. Uh, while learning polymorphic VTEC, we cannot miss the torsade points. So, let me explain for you that. Torsade points is associated with the prolonged QT interval. Torsades usually terminate spontaneously but frequently recover and may degenerate into ventricular fibrillation. The hallmark of this rhythm is the upward and downward upward and downward deflection of the QRS complex around the baseline. The term the torsade point means twisting about the points. We can see here some are upwards and some are downwards. This is the uh, example for torsade points. We can see here also some are upward and downwards. Ventricular arrhythmias are more serious than other arrhythmias because the ventricles are responsible for moving the blood throughout the body. Next we will see ventricular fibrillation. VF in which the heart vibrates rather than contracts. All output from the heart stops. Blood pressure falls rapidly and patient loses consciousness. It is linked to the clinical term sudden death. This rhythm is not able to support life and will lead to clinical death if untreated. During VF, the heart is electrically stimulated by multiple ectopic sites so that instead of contracting rhythmically, the heart muscles actually fibrillate. Next, we will see the classification of VF. VF has been classified electrocardiographically as fine amplitude or coarse amplitude. It will be more clear with the examples. Next, we will see what are the five steps to identify VF. Here is the five steps to identify ventricular fibrillation. First, we will look at the rate. In VF, it is not discernible. The second one is what is the rhythm. In VF, it will be rapid, unorganized, and not discernible. The third one is, is there any P wave before each QRS? Are P waves upright and uniform? In VF, you cannot see any P wave. The fourth one is, what is the length of the PR interval? If there is no P wave and QRS, we cannot get any PR interval. And the fifth one is, do all QRS complex look alike? What is the length of the QRS complex? In VF, we cannot see any QRS complexes. This is an example for ventricle fibrillation in Togli DCG. Here we can see rhythm irregular, unable to determine heart rate, and P wave and QRS complexes are absent. There are two types of ventricular fibrillation, uh, fine VF and coarse VF. I will show you the examples. This is an example for fine VF. Here, the waves are very fine and uh, very rapid. I cannot see any uh, QRS complexes here. And the next one is uh, coarse VF. Here, the waves are very rapid and uh, unorganized. And compared with the fine VF, the waves are a little bit bigger and we cannot get any P and QRS complexes. Keep one point in your mind always. Don't treat the monitor, treat the patient. Once you got any arrhythmia on the ECG, don't forget to assess the patient. Is the rhythm is correlated with the patient condition or symptoms? Because any artifact in the ECG can be misdiagnosed as these rhythms and cause vital mistakes. So be careful. I hope you enjoy the class like I'm always saying, practice with the ECG to become confident. About management of these rhythms can be discussed in coming classes. I just avoid from these episodes because to avoid a long boring classes. So thank you for your supports and shares. Don't forget to subscribe my channel in YouTube and stay tuned for next class. Thank you. Bye bye.